Good evening. Happy New Year. Welcome to the Church of the Ascension on this, the Solemnity of Mary, the Holy Mother of God. My name is Rick Brown, and my fellow minister of the Word is my wife, Teresa. The Church of Ascension is a missionary discipleship parish. Each of us is a missionary disciple to the extent that we have encountered the love of God in Christ Jesus. We willingly share that experience by living out our mission to proclaim the Word, celebrate the Eucharist, and serve the local community. Tonight's Mass is being streamed live. We are united both in person and with our online family. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Ben Garrett, assisted by Deacon Gary. We ask you to silently, silently, silence your cell phones at this time. Church offices and food pantry will be closed on Monday, January the 2nd, in observance of New Year's Day, and will reopen on Tuesday, January 3rd. As you are aware, Father Daniel is taking a vacation and is visiting his family for the next month. Please welcome the priests who are filling in for him on weekday and weekend masses. We will not have reconciliation at Ascension until February the 4th. Social Ministry wishes to thank all those who participated in our holiday food and gifts to make Christmas very special for local families. 110 Christmas dinner baskets and 648 gifts were distributed with good tidings and comfort of joy. Matthew Kelly's book, Holy Moments, contains simple wisdom to make each moment holy. Many of our church family have found this book to be very inspirational. We know that many of you were away for Christmas. Copies of the book are in the commons. We want you to go home and take one of these with you as our gift. We ask that you take only one per family. Our annual spaghetti dinner with musical group Fond Memories is Saturday, January the 21st. Tickets go on sale next weekend. Plan early to attend as tickets sell out quickly. Please rise and greet those around you. Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. virginity of blessed Mary bestowed on the human race the grace of eternal salvation. Grant, we pray, that we may experience the intercession of her through whom we were found worthy to receive the author of life, our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord said to Moses, speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them, this is how you shall bless the Israelites. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly upon you and give you peace. So shall they invoke my name upon the Israelites and I will bless them. The word of the Lord. Reveal to the 
faithful your way, Lord, salvation for Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. As proof that you are sons, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that had been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told to them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. When eight days were completed for, him, for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, good evening, everybody. Good evening, Father. Happy and blessed New Year to everybody. Someone told me the other day that they like it when Christmas and New Year's fall on Sunday because it's like knocking out two obligations <laughs> at the same time. You might not be aware of this, but pastors in particular hate it when Christmas and New Year's falls on Sunday because they lose out on an extra collection. <laughs> so that's probably a little bit more than you need to know. But you're probably wondering, like, whose ugly mug you're stuck looking, looking at tonight. Uh, my name is Father Ben, Father Ben Garrett. I'm an active duty Navy chaplain. I am the chaplain for the USS Bataan, which is a ship over at the Naval Station. I live just down the road with the monks over at St. Gregory's. 
Uh, there's four Benedictine monks and three Navy chaplains, so there's seven of us in the same rectory, so it's kind of like a frat house of priests over there. <laughs> uh, we have a lot of fun, so um, you're stuck with me tonight. I'm glad that you're all here, and I'm happy to be here with you. God bless all of you. So the first day of the year is dedicated to the Blessed Virgin Mary under her title as the Mother of God. When I was a teenager, I remember a priest asked me one time, well, if she's not the mother of God, then who was she the mother of? Kind of makes you think. For Catholics, devotion to the Blessed Mother is usually something we take for granted. Her presence is something normal to us. And if you've ever lived in or visited a predominantly Catholic country like Italy or Spain or Poland or Mexico or anywhere in Central and South America, you will find the image of the Blessed Virgin Mary everywhere. And it might be appropriate to share with you all that I am a convert to Catholicism. I did not grow up Catholic. I became a Catholic in high school. And if there happens to be any, any non-Catholics here who were dragged here by your family or friends, watch out. I mean, look what happened to me, okay? As I became Catholic, devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary was something new for me. And this being the, a solemn feast day in honor of her, I thought tonight I would just share a few reflections on Mary's role in our faith with you. For most of the world's Christians, living our faith without a very present Mary is unheard of, even unthinkable. Mary's role in our faith is to bring us to her son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we don't need her to do this. We can go directly to our Lord, and he loves it when we do. But Mary gives us a different kind of relationship with the Lord. First of all, our devotion to the Blessed Virgin Mary is all about her intercession. We don't worship her or asking for her prayers. And just as we believe that the prayers we offer for other people and for ourselves have some benefit of grace and blessing for the people we're praying for, it's probably safe to say that any prayers the saints in heaven offer for us might just be a little bit more efficacious. And devotion to the Blessed Mother is all about asking for her to pray for us. I guarantee you Jesus is not jealous of the Blessed Mother. They're not in some sort of competition in heaven. And as far as I'm concerned, we can use all the help we can get, no matter where it comes from. We need all the prayers that we can get. And devotion to Mary and all the saints is just one more way for us to live our faith to the fullest so that one day we can join their ranks in heaven. Secondly, there's Mary's relationship with the apostles after the Lord ascended into heaven. She must have been like the den mother for those guys. The scriptures we just heard about Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds all of that had to come from Mary. It says that she kept all of these things reflecting on them in her heart. It is because of her that we know about the circumstances of Jesus' birth. This whole season that we're celebrating now came from her. She is responsible for telling the apostles and the evangelists what happened. The angels, the wise men, King Herod, the shepherds, the escape into Egypt, all of that had to come from her. I mean, I really don't see our Lord sitting down and going into details about the circumstances of his birth with his apostles. As an example, I have never told anyone about the circumstances of my birth, but my mother will talk your ear off about it if you let her. It had to be the same way with the Blessed Mother. She told the story of what happened because it happened to her. But what about difficult church teachings? Some of the doctrines we have about the Blessed Mother can confuse people. The Immaculate Conception, her assumption body and soul into heaven. These were difficult for, for me to grasp when I was coming into this whole circus. Okay? But without getting too much into theological weeds here, those doctrines ha have mostly to do with what our belief, about our belief that God creates us with some purpose. We were created with some calling. 
We are created with a mission, with a vocation, if you will. God did not look down from heaven 2,000 years ago thinking to himself, I wonder how many virgins in Israel aren't busy right now. Oh, there's one. Zap. No. No, it did not happen like that at all. Pope Benedict XVI, in his very first homily as Pope in 2005, said, We are not some casual and meaningless product of evolution. Each of us is the result of a thought of God. Each of us has been willed into existence. Each of us is loved. Each of us is necessary. Mary not only teaches us about the Lord, but she teaches us about ourselves too, because Mary was created to be the mother of the Messiah. Her soul, her body, were created to be the mother of God in the flesh. Every part of Jesus' human nature and body came from Mary, and therefore she was created with every gift, every quality, and every grace that would make her mission in life possible. And the same is true for us. On a much simpler note, something else that came to my mind when thinking about how to talk about the Blessed Virgin Mary has to do with our friends. As kids, we usually had some friends that we only associated with at school. And there were others that we spent time with away from school. It's probably safe to say that one thing that marked our relationship with our very best friends is that we also knew their parents. We knew their mom. We knew their dad. If we're able to get very close to someone, we usually don't just know them, we usually know their family as well. The first big step in any significant dating relationship is meeting someone's mother, isn't it? For better or worse. When we meet somebody's family, it's sort of like finding that missing piece of the puzzle, that whole apple doesn't fall far from the tree sort of thing. We learn so much more about someone when we meet their family, don't we? If we really know Jesus, we're going to know his mom too. The Blessed Mother taught the apostles something about Jesus they would not have known without her. And she's still teaching us about her son today. Mary brings us closer to our Lord in a way we just wouldn't be able to know him without her. Mary wants us to know and love her son, our Lord Jesus Christ, as much as she does. Mary gave the Lord his humanity. She is our window into the hidden years of our Lord's life on earth. Mary gave us the details of Christmas. And at the end of the day, our Lord and God, Mary and all the saints, want what is truly best for us. And what is truly best for us is him. It is the Lord. And he makes himself present in our lives in many, many ways, most especially through the mystical body of the church. I often think of the church as more of a field hospital for sinners than a museum for saints. So what that means is we all belong here with all of our brokenness and all of it. And if there's somebody out there that doesn't have any problems and they're perfect, I don't know what to do with you. <laughs> we deal with broken people here. And I put myself first in line. Seeing as how Pope Benedict XVI died this morning, I thought I'd end this homily with a, a quote of his that I like. Uh, this was from a book. It was an interview that was turned into a book called Salt of the Earth before he was elected pope. To the question, why believe? He answered, faith gives joy. When God is not there, the world becomes desolate, and everything becomes boring, and everything is completely unsatisfactory. It's easy to see today how a world empty of God is also increasingly consuming itself, how it has become a wholly joyless world. The great joy comes from the fact that there is this great love, and that is the essential message of faith. You are unswervingly loved. God bless y'all. Thanks for putting up with me. Keep me in your prayers. Praise be Jesus Christ now and forever. Amen. And Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray, pray for, for us. us.
Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, death was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. We now bring our concerns and desires to God our Father. On this world day of prayer for peace, that we create a culture of care and compassion to those we encounter in our daily lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That world leaders be more like the Blessed Mother, treasuring God's words and deeds in their minds and hearts, drawing upon wisdom to stop oppression and cultivate love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That through the actions of honoring the mother of our Lord, may we lead lives of good deeds in the name of Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who are sick, may the curing power of God bring relief and comfort, especially for those names of the chronically ill listed in the bulletin, and for those names we mention aloud now. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our loved ones who have passed away, may they find eternal rest with Mary, Queen of Heaven, and the saints, especially Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI and founding member Joan Camuvez. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. In confidence, we lift our prayers to you, O God. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus, our Messiah and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Sleep the silent 
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in your kindness begin all good things and bring them to fulfillment, grant to us who find joy in the solemnity of the Holy Mother of God, that just as we glory in the beginnings of your grace, so one day we may rejoice in its completion. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Barry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
the Savior's command and form a divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace, and we ask if you're watching us live stream, please put a note in the chat box. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who were called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Jesus Christ.
Let us pray. We have received this heavenly sacrament with joy, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that it may lead us to eternal life, where we rejoice to proclaim the blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son, and Mother of the Church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. So as Ascension family, we like to celebrate birthdays and anniversaries, so I would ask how many of you here uh, have a birthday in January, if you would please stand up or just raise your hand so we can wish you happy birthday. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any anniversaries for January? I guess, oh, there you go, hey. Uh, 
Apparently, a lot of people don't want to get married after Christmas. But <laughs> Thank you for standing up. Uh, are there any visitors with us this evening? If you would mind standing up, letting us know who you are, where you're visiting from, so we can welcome you. Any visitors with us this evening? I guess those are all the ones partying tonight. So, um, <laughs> But we do want to thank uh, Father... Gary, we got one in the back. Oh, oh she I'm sat sorry? back down. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi. Hi, Ann. And where are you from? Oh, great. Well, I hope that you'll come back. All right. Thank you, Ann. And here's some friends of mine. Yes, you want to introduce yourself? Stephen? Jacksonville. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Hello, Elu. Good to see you. Yeah, okay, good. Well, and I see the proud uh, grandparents behind you, Lou and Sue, so thank you for standing up. All right, thank you, Stephen. All right. I want to thank Father Ben for joining us this evening. We hope that... We hope you, uh, we'll see you sometime over the next five weeks. I got two masses tomorrow, so... <laughs> All right, please stand for a closing blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We go in the peace of Christ. Thank you, God.